Hey, you're in the den with Dr. Jen. I'm here with Dr. Neil Cannon, who's a sex therapist and a licensed marriage and family therapist. And we are talking about fetishes. Mm. So let's start again here with a definition. Sexual fetishes are when somebody, usually a man, is aroused by an inanimate object, a body part, or some kind of certain situation. Okay, I know a question that a lot of folks have around this is what causes fetishes? Mm. So we don't know. That's, okay. the, that's the biggest thing that people could take away from this because as a culture, we always want to assign blame. Yep. Right? What caused this? Well, we don't know. Yeah. There's, there's patterns sometimes, there's ideas, there's thoughts. Um, for instance, sometimes uh, fetishes are, are generational. Like, for instance, people in my generation, I was born in the 1950s, late 1950s. <laughs> <laughs> Just to clarify. <laughs> People in my generation can have fetishes to like rubber caps, you know, swim caps oh. or rubber girdles. And then you kind of move forward, fast forward in generations. You know, people born in the 50s, 60s, 70s, a lot of smoking fetishes. Actually, even born in the 40s, smoking fetishes. Um, and then if you look at the 80s, how about fetishes around Madonna bullet bra kinds of things? Oh, fascinating. Yeah. Interesting. Do folks ever change? Do, do fetishes change throughout a lifetime or they stay kind of stable? So once somebody has an erotic template that gets set, which usually gets set really young, right? Our erotic templates might get set when we're four or five, six years old. Yeah. It probably is not going to move a lot. There could be some wiggle room and it yeah. might take different shapes and colors and variations. But if somebody has a shoe fetish at six, there's a really good chance they'll have a shoe fetish at 60. Gotcha. So what do you, what do, you do with folks um, that are showing up? Um, what's your approach with this? Yeah, sure. So the first thing we want to do is let people have a space where they get to just talk without judgment and be able to process things that they may not have ever been able to tell somebody before. Mm. So that's part of it. And then, of course, a big part is, is trying to help people figure out, instead of asking so much why, like why do I have this or why does my husband have this fetish, think more about the what and the how. How do we integrate this into our life, into our relationship in a way that's, that feels good and healthy to both of us? That's awesome. That's such a powerful yeah. transition. Nice. Yeah. Thank you, Neil. Mm -hmm.